This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good evening. We are coming on the air with some sad news to report the death just announced of former First Lady Barbara Bush. She was the wife of George H.W. Bush, the 41st president of the United States, and the mother of George W. Bush, the 43rd president. Mrs. Bush was 92 years old. She had been in failing health and in the hospital recently, suffering from congestive heart failure and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In addition to former President George W. Bush, she was the mother of former Governor Jeb Bush of Florida and four other children. We have a look at Mrs. Bush from NBC's Peter Alexander. Barbara Bush, the former first lady, was always known to be candid and caring. With her white hair and signature pearls, Mrs. Bush was often thought of as the nation's favorite grandmother. Aides called her the national treasure, the treasure for short. I've been the luckiest woman in the world, truthfully, and I know it. And it was her husband who saw her as matter of fact and direct, lovingly calling her Miss Frank. She earned and won the respect of a lot of American people because they saw her what she is, down to earth, loving mother, and setting an example with no bull about it. But Mrs. Bush saw herself more in the role of family enforcer, something her granddaughter Jenna Bush Hager teased her about. Why do you think we call you the enforcer? Well, because I enforce. <laughs> If you what? do something bad, I point it out to you. She had quite a bite, disarmingly candid, self-deprecating, and wickedly funny. On Sarah Palin, for instance. I sat next to her once, thought she was beautiful. And I think she's very happy in Alaska. And uh, I hope she'll stay there. On the Today Show, so months before her son Mrs. Jeb Bush? announced a presidential <laughs> run, Mrs. Bush, Bush said she didn't miss one thing about the White House and didn't want another reason to go back. There are other people out there that are very qualified, and we've had enough Bushes. Mrs. Bush, of course, already had a place in history. The only woman since Abigail Adams, president of the United States, to marry one Wilson president, Augusta, by George Walker Bush, and give birth to mother. another. They used to say, well, you know, he's got his daddy's eyes, but his mother's mouth. <laughs> Which means I'm about to talk a lot. Born Barbara Pierce, she grew up in Rye, New York. Her father, Marvin Pierce, a distant relative of President Franklin Pierce, was publisher of McCall's and Red Book magazines. Within weeks of Pearl Harbor, when Barbara was just 16 years old, she met George Bush, one year her senior, at a Christmas dance at Round Hill Club in Greenwich, Connecticut. I could hardly breathe. I thought he was so beautiful. They were secretly engaged and three years later married when he was home on leave from the Navy reluctantly admitting she married the first person she'd ever kissed. Strange, I admit. Still staying with your story? <laughs> After the war, they headed for Texas, raising six children. And while her husband built his oil business, Barbara Bush was very much in charge at home. But she was changed forever when her three-year-old daughter, Robin, died of leukemia. After she died, it was a terrible time in our life. And uh, George put his arms around me and did not let me step away. Cancer became a family cause, and throughout her political service, Barbara Bush played a critical role on causes ranging from AIDS to illiteracy. You've got two choices in life. You can like what you do, or you can dislike what you do. I've chosen to like what I do, and I think I'm the luckiest woman in the world. And the Bushes were dog people. Barbara brought their Springer Spaniel, Millie, to the White House, describing in a book how Millie might have seen a day in the life of the president and the White House. And when she drew criticism from feminists who found her message of traditional family service too old-fashioned, she responded, offering this advice. At the end of your life, you will never regret not having passed one more test, winning one more verdict, or not closing one more deal. You will regret time not spent with a husband, a child, a friend, or a parent. Barbara Bush, a woman of strong opinions, ultimately left politics to her husband and sons. She's remembered for her maternal persona, Yankee frugality, and maintaining her role as ferocious protector of the Bush family name. Peter Alexander, NBC News. And we have received a statement uh, from the office of former President George H.W. Bush. It reads, a former first lady of the United States of America and relentless proponent of family literacy, Barbara Pierce Bush passed away Tuesday, April 17, 2018, at the age of 92. She is survived by her husband of 73 years, President George H.W. Bush, five children and their spouses, 17 grandchildren, 
seven great-grandchildren and her brother Scott Pierce. She was preceded in death by her second child, Pauline Robinson, Robin Bush, and her siblings, Martha Rafferty and James R. Pierce. The official funeral schedule will be announced as soon as is practical, reads the end of that statement again on behalf of from the office of George H.W. Bush. I want to bring in our Andrea Mitchell. Andrea has spent the last few days actually uh, in Houston uh, after we re received word of, uh, of Mrs. Bush's failing health. Uh, Andrea, what can you tell us uh, about her final days? Well, in her final days, she was surrounded by family and friends. People were reading to her. Neil uh, also talked about having read to her her own memoir, and that was very peaceful to her. Susan Baker, of course, the wife of former Secretary of State and the great Bush family friend, James Baker, Lester, she was reading to her for about five hours on Saturday. Sadly, her husband, who was, was holding her hand and by her side for these days, did leave on Saturday just for a brief 24-hour trip to Connecticut, where he was attending funeral services for his own brother, Bucky Bush. So there was a lot of sadness in this family. He died recently. But the fact is, this lady was so extraordinary. She had amazing political skills, but she also had such a devotion to her family. Loyalty was the most important factor to her. So if you crossed her, if you were unkind to any of her children, that's when you saw the fury of the enforcer, as Jenna and the others affectionately called her. Uh, she was gammy to them, but she was also one of the most extraordinary women in American politics. And Lester, as you pointed out, only the second woman since Abigail Adams to have been the wife of one president and the mother of another. I was there at Wellesley, by the way, and it was controversial on that day in 1990 when she spoke to the Wellesley graduating class because she spoke about uh, the role of women in, in, in a traditional sense, but also talking about the importance of devotion to family. And so she was trying to bridge that divide between generations and, uh, frankly, did it brilliantly. And for that, she will be remembered by generations of women. In Houston, just yesterday, a younger woman, one of my colleagues there, was saying that she remembered that wealthy speech right. as importantly as I did. Andrea Mitchell, Andrea, thank you uh, for your thoughts and notes of, uh, of the last few days covering um, Mrs. Bush in Houston again. Uh, Barbara Bush dead at 92. There will be more coverage, of course, on your local news. Some of you will be seeing me in the West on NBC Nightly News here shortly. We'll have more on all that. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York. Good evening. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.